So let's talk about resistor circuits and resistor networks. Often in physics classes, you'll see combinations of series and parallel together. Sometimes there'll be qualitative questions. What will happen if this light bulb is unscrewed? What will happen if this is short circuited? And sometimes there'll be quantitative questions. What's the current through this resistor? How much power is that resistor using? What's the potential difference between this point and that point? So let's go through this and see if we can understand how it works. Most of it is actually quite simple once we are sure that we understand how series and parallel work. Okay, so let's consider this fairly simple circuit. I've got a 60 volt battery. We can tell it's a battery because it's got a long side and a short side. Remember the long side is always positive and the short side is always negative. And then I've got a resistor network. I've got a six ohm resistor here, and then I've got a branching. Remember that branching means parallel. So what we would say is that this 10 ohm resistor is connected in parallel to, to what? It's connected in parallel to the series combination of seven and eight. See, seven and eight are connected in series, and then that combination is connected in parallel to the 10 ohm. And then what about the parallel combination? What would you say about the connection between this parallel combination and this 6 ohm resistor? Well, anybody who goes through the 6 ohm got to go through this parallel combination. So that means that we would say the 6 ohm resistor is connected in series to this parallel combination. All right, so let's do some qualitative stuff first, and then we'll actually go through and solve this circuit completely and determine the current and the potential difference through every single resistor. All right, so some of the qualitative questions might go like this. Suppose that we unscrewed the light bulb associated with the 10 ohm resistor. So we're gonna kill the 10 ohm. And then it'll ask something like this. What will happen to the 6 ohm resistor? If it's a light bulb, will it get brighter? Will it get dimmer? If I unscrew down here. All right, now let's see what this means. If I unscrew down here, then that means that I'm taking away a resistor in parallel. Now remember that when you add a resistor in parallel, the overall resistance goes down. So, when I unscrew this, the overall resistance in this circuit is going to go up, not down. So that means that the 6 ohm will get dimmer. Okay? If I uh, get rid of this 10. What about the 7 and the 8? Well, what happened to them? Well, this is a little bit more tricky because while the overall current did go down, notice that now it has no choice. It has to go through the seven and the eight, right? So the overall current, this current went down, but the current going through here through the seven and the eight is going to go up. All right. So seven and eight brighter. All right, let's look at what will happen if we kill the seven ohm. So now we're doing like that. This now is fully connected, but we've unscrewed the seven ohm. All right, so what's gonna happen to the eight? Well, the eight was in series with that. And that means that since no current can flow through the seven, none can th flow through the eight. So the 8 ohm will go off. All right, so that kills that whole branch. So now notice that it's exactly the same thing. I'm killing a branch in parallel, and that is going to reduce the overall current I, but it will increase the amount of current that goes through the 10. So six, um, dimmer, and 10, 
brighter. All right, and that's the way that that's going to go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and deconstruct this circuit and just solve it. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to systematically combine the resistors in series or parallel, whatever we need to do, until we have a much simpler circuit. And then we'll just find the currents, and then we'll reconstruct the circuit. All right, so I'll write it first like this. Sixty there, and then we've got six here. This guy I left alone, that's my ten. And then here what I'm doing is I'm saying, look, these guys are in series, so I'm just going to add them together. Well, what does that give me? Well, it gives me fifteen. All right, now I've got a ten and a fifteen in parallel. So I'm going to add these two in parallel. Now remember the way that you do that. You do ten to the negative one plus fifteen to the negative one. And then you do answer to the negative one. If you're using a calculator, that's the easiest way to do it. That way I've found that students make much less mistakes if they just type in this to the negative one, that to the negative one, and then answer to the negative one. Another way to do it is to write it as 10 times 15 over 10 plus 15. That will always give you the same answer, all right? But if you try to do it this way, it won't work if you're trying to do three or more resistors in parallel, whereas this will. Either way, this turns out to be six. So we'll end up with six, six, and 60. And now, of course, these two are connected in series. So that means that really it's just 60 and 12. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, how much current is going through this 12 ohm effective resistor? Well, if the potential difference across it is 60, then I must have five amps going there. All right. Now let's go back through the reconstruction of the circuit because I think that it really helps you understand the parallel and series combinations as we go through and reconstruct this circuit. All right, so five amps was going through this 12 ohm resistor. That was a series combination. Well, in series, current's the same. So that means that I've got five amps going through both of these resistors. All right, now I've got five amps going through this six ohm resistor. This six ohm resistor was the parallel combination of the 10 and the 15 over here. In parallel, potential difference is the same. So what I need to do to reconstruct this parallel combination is I need to determine what's the potential difference across this resistor. And of course, I'll do that just by doing I, R. Five times six is 30. So that means that I gotta have 30 volts across the parallel combination. 30 volts across the 10, 30 volts across the 15. All right, so that means that I've got five amps coming in here. To have 30 volts across the 10, three amps. To have 30 volts across the 15, two amps. All right, and then of course, we'll go up and we'll reconstruct our seven and our eight. Of course, that's a series combination. And in series, current is the same. So we've got to have two amps going through both of these guys. All right. Now, what I usually do at this point is come over here and make a table like this. All right. So when I look at this table, what's going on is I've got each of the resistors written here. These are the physical resistors that are actually in the first circuit, the actual circuit, and this is my effective resistance. Notice that I've got total here. That's going to be a nice little check of all of our math, and it'll check everything at once. All right, so I've got all the potential differences. I've got all the currents. Remember, it was five amps, and then it split into two and three. The five amps are going through the total, 
and the potential difference across the total is 60. Notice that in each of these lines, I could get delta V by doing I times R. Six times five is 30. Seven times two is 14. Eight times two is 16, and so on and so forth. All right, now for the check. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, look, this effective resistor has to be the effective resistor. It has to be the whole resistor network. It has to do everything that that resistor network does. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate how much power in watts each of these resistors is using up. Well, to get the power, we can always just do IV. This times that. So we'll get 150, we'll get 28, we'll get 32, and we'll get 90. Now, these are the amounts of power that are used by each of the physical resistors. If I add them all up, I get 300 watts. So that means that the resistor network is using 300 joules per second. What's the effective resistor using? Well, what's 60 times five? 300. And that gives us the check. When we deconstruct the entire circuit and then reconstruct it back again, we need to get powers that add to the total power that we obtained with our effective resistor. And that's resistor circuits.